So we want to learn how to code games like Pong. One of the core mechanics of this is this ball that is bouncing around the screen. So before we're able to code these lives and these paddles, we need to understand how to code a bouncing ball. And that's going to be the focus of this project. We're going to learn how to make this. And as a bonus, we're going to learn how to make this cool thing while we're at it as a little extra. So we're going to go through eight different milestones. We're going to break down getting to this bad boy into eight different steps from getting the ball to bounce left and right to just getting a ball to move from the start of the screen to the end of the screen. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's get started with milestone one. All we need to do, start with a ball, make it move from the left side of the screen to the right side. So in order to get a ball, we're going to use circle. And we're going to say circle, give it an X, let's say 400, a Y 400, and a diameter of 100. So now the question is, how do we get this ball to move? So one super simple way is we can just set that the X coordinate is equal to mouse X. And what will happen now is that the ball will move with my mouse. I want to use something called variables in order to make this look a little bit prettier. And I'm going to say X is just equal to mouse X, and then just put that as X. So now how is this working? Why is the ball moving with my mouse? Let's go ahead and show the coordinates. So I'm going to do something called text in order to show the value of X. Let's put it at position 400, 400 as well. And by default, text is black, so we need to make it white, so fill white. You can see the text. Let's make it a little bit bigger. I think we need to use text size 20. Does that work? Yeah, let's make it even bigger, 30. Okay, so now we can see the X. I want to move our Y a little bit down so it's not in the way. There we go. Cool. So you can see as I'm moving my mouse, my X value is increasing. And so if I want something that's going to start on the left side of the screen, and go over to the right, I just want to keep increasing my x. So I want my x to go 393, 394, 395, 396, etc. to just keep going. So one thing we could do in order to get that would be something like this. If I said x is equal to, let's say I start with an x coordinate of 100. So I want my ball to start at 100. And I say x is equal to x plus 10. So that means every time this line of code runs, it's going to increase x by 10. But what you'll notice is that nothing is moving. So we know that draw is running in an infinite loop. What happens is this line comes all the way to the end, runs this line, comes back up. And what's happening then is the following. Let's go ahead and print out text at different moments. So if I say at this point, if I say text of x, and let's put this at 500, 500 instead, and then I'm going to put another text over here. So that's after. Okay. So this one is the before. This one is the after. So it's first set to 100. And now it's getting increased by 10. So we get 110. But now the problem is that it gets to the last line. It jumps back up to the top of draw. And then it's just going to be reset back to 10. And then it's going to say, okay, 100 plus 10 is 110. Cool put the ball at 110, but then it's just going to jump back and we're going to keep resetting. Because we're defining x inside of draw, we are always going to have the same x. What we need to be able to do to get this to work is define x outside of draw. So in order to do that, what I'm going to say is x is equal to 100 outside of draw. Now we're dealing with global and local variables. And so I need to say global x in order to let the draw know I'm dealing with this guy. Now, if I get rid of this here, notice what happens. It moves, right? Because now X is no longer being reset. X is starting at a value. And then at the end of draw, it jumps back to the top. Whatever the value is at the end of the first loop, it just keeps going. And you can see these numbers going off and onwards. But cool. That is how we get a ball left side, right side. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, milestone two, instead of the ball moving left to right, we're going to move, we're going to make it move right to left. So I want to actually bring back x is equal to mouse x in order to try and illustrate this. And so we saw in order to make it, get it to move left to right, we need to increase x is constantly increasing as I go across. 
If I wanted to go right to left, notice my x is just decreasing as I go right to left. So now all that means is that if I'm at 480, I wanted to go to 470, I want to go to 460, I want to subtract instead of add. So all I need to do is say x is equal to x minus 10. And let's put this at the end of the screen. And there we go. Okay, milestone three. This time from a different angle and a new shirt. We need to get the ball to not only move left or right, but to move in a diagonal motion. So at the moment, our ball is only moving left or right. If I make this just a little bit slower, we can see it on the screen. How would I make it move up or down? Let's not worry about diagonal right now. Let's get it moving up or down. If we were to change the Y position of our circle, then we should be getting Y motion. So let's just follow the exact same steps we did for x, put y at a certain place, let's say 100. Now, similarly, I need to define y as a global variable. And now let's go ahead and change y to y plus 5. Let's keep x, and let's just put that into circle. And what you see is you'll get this vertical motion, because now x and y are both changing. Let's make this very clear. Let's say I put x all the way at 0 and 0. And I'm going to say x plus 1 and y plus 1. Every frame, what's going to happen, what we can do, so we're actually going to use something called frame rate. Frame rate, by default, P5 is running 60 frames per second. So every time, draw is being run 60 times. If I say 1, it's going to only run it once per second. And so now you can see, okay, it's going to be very difficult to see. So let's go x plus 10, y plus 10. You'll see every time this ball is moving a little bit. So every time it says x plus 10, y plus 10, x plus 10, y plus 10, x plus 10, y plus 10. And we get this diagonal motion. If we wanted to go at a different angle, every step, we just needed to go a different amount of x versus y. Say I wanted to go 20x, but only went 5y it's going to go at a different angle to what you're seeing here. So if I admit to do that, for example, I'm going to make this x20 and y5. And then you can see it's going much more across the x. If we speed this up again, it's going much more across the x than it is across the y. Cool, milestone three. Milestone four, we're going to get bouncing. In particular, we're going to get it to bounce off of the right wall. So. There's a few key new ingredients we're going to need. One of them is if statements. What we want to be able to do is say to this ball, hey, when you get to this right wall, bounce. How we implement that in code, we'll find out. But for now, let's implement the logic of that. And so instead of implementing the bouncing, what I want to just do is when it hits the right wall, for its x position to just reset. So it should go all the way to the right and just reset back, all the way to the right and then reset back. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to get rid of changing y for now. We're just going to worry about x. Let's put y at a better starting point. And so how can we get this to reset? A few key ingredients. One, we have this variable, this global variable called width. And width will keep track of the width of our screen, of our output. In this case, it's called a canvas. And so what we want to be saying is, hey, if my x gets to my width, reset. I'm going to start with where people make the most common mistake here. I'm going to say if x equals width. So if the x is equal to the width of my screen, then I'm going to reset my x back to zero. And what you notice here is that it's not actually working. And I'll show you why it's not working. Let's use something a little bit smaller. Let's use something like if x is equal to 300. So we're going to move the wall to this point, x is equal to 300. And there you see it, right? So when that x reaches 300, it gets reset back to the start of the screen. But now, all of a sudden, if I go x plus equals 3, there is it. Oh, okay, it does work. Let's I mean, find a number where this doesn't work. Okay, 7. Okay, 7, it just goes straight past it. Why is it going straight past it? Because what's happening is that x is never actually equal to 300. If we're starting at 0, it's going to be equal to something less than 300 right before, and then something greater than 300. So it's never going to actually be equal to 300. If we want this to always work, we want to use greater than. So if x is greater than 300, then reset. 
And now we can set this back to width to get this resetting action all the time. Okay, so we have some logic going, but we want to get it to bounce. How do we get it to bounce? It has to do all with direction and whether we're plusing or minusing. So what we've seen in the past is if I start x on a further point and I go x is equal to x minus 7, it goes from right to left. So whether I am doing plus here, if I'm adding to x, it goes to the right. If I'm subtracting from x, it goes to the left. So what we want to try and be able to change is how can we change this sign? Every time we say if x is greater than width, we want to somehow change this. How can we change this? One cool thing I want to show you is if I say plus, if I go 2, let's, let's use a little bit of math here. If I say something like 2 plus negative 1, what is the answer of that? The answer is going to be 1, because essentially that's going to be the same as 2 minus 1. I'm saying take 2 and add to it negative 1. So I'm going to go backwards by 1. So what's interesting here, so let's see this. If I go x plus minus 7, I get that desired effect. So what if we created a variable for this, and then we changed its sign whenever x was greater than width? So what we can do for that is I can define a new variable, x speed. Here I'm going to define it equal to 5. And what I'm going to say here is now instead of changing x, I need to change x speed. So I'm going to say x is equal to x plus x speed. And this is going to work exactly as we've seen before. And then I can say minus in order to get it left or to get it right. Perfect. So what I need to just change now is x speed. So if I say x speed is equal to negative x speed, local variable x speed reference not defined, we have to put it in the global scope, x speed, then we get this bouncing effect. Milestone six, how can we get the ball to bounce off of the left and right walls? So not only bouncing off the end wall, but also the start wall. So we already have this right boundary, x greater than width. So what we're looking at is this boundary all the way on the right. If the ball meets that, the x coordinate meets that, bounce. So now we just want to do the same for here. And so we want to ask ourselves, okay, what is the x coordinate for this line over here, for the left wall boundary? And it's zero. So what we can just say is if x gain less than zero, we can, we also just want to change the speed, right? If the speed is positive when it moves to the right, and then the speed is negative. When it hits this wall, we want the speed to be positive again. So we're going to say x speed equal to negative x speed. Okay, so if you're not familiar with negative numbers, this might actually be confusing. Because if I say negative 1 is equal to 1, that's, yeah, it's, it will be a longer video to explain that properly on if you're not familiar with negative numbers, why this is the case. But a negative of a negative number is 1. You could think about it kind of just negative is saying go in the other direction than the one you're used to. So if I'm saying I'm going in the positive direction and I'm saying, okay, go in the negative direction, okay, I'm going to go there. But I'm saying go in the negative direction, so I need to go in the opposite direction of the direction I'm going, I need to go there. You will get there. Cool. It's bouncing. One little cool trick is that instead of having these two separate if statements, I can use an or. So I can say if x is greater than width or x is less than zero, we'll get the same effect. Sweet. Milestone seven. How do we get it to bounce off of the left and right walls and the up and down walls? I can, we did something similar before, right? When we wanted it to move up or down, we just needed to do the same thing that we were doing to x to y. So now if we want it to bounce up and down off the top and bottom walls, we just need to copy the exact same logic we did for x for y. So let's do that. So let's say we're going to create a new variable, y speed, let's make it 3, put that in our global scope, y speed. Then we want to uncomment this line, so y is y plus y speed. And we want to just do this exact same, so I can copy paste this if statement. And I can say, if y is greater than height, or 
y is less than zero. We don't want to change the x speed. We now want to change the y speed. So this line up here is our height, right? That's the, we use this global variable to express the right wall of our x. Height is how high the screen is. So when our y gets bigger than that, we want it to bounce. And then similarly, this line at the bottom here, that's when y is zero. And then we have a bouncing ball. Okay, super simple. How do we then get to this guy? What's blocking, what's missing between milestone seven and milestone eight? Super simple. One, actually, just I realized our ball is no longer blue. So let's just make it blue again by saying full blue. Unended. Okay, there we go. Let's just get the indentation right. Yes, okay, cool. So we have our blue ball. I'm just going to get rid of background. So whatever background is here, I'm going to do, oh, wrong line. I'm going to delete this line. And let's get rid of draw tick axes as well. And there you go. So what's happening is because draw is running in an infinite loop background was being painted as well every time with the ball so let's bring back let me rather uncomment right so when background is not there it's not painting a layer over the previous frame and so we're seeing all of the previous frames but when background is there it's painting a whole layer it's putting another piece of paper on top of everything that was drawn previously so you can't see it but then you can get this very cool effect. If you want to go and make this fun, let's just do an extra thing. Who, how can you make this go with random colors? If we use the random command and we use RGB values, I could do something like this. I can say random 0255, random 0255, random 0255. And there you get a little bit of a crazy looking thing. And so you can play around with the different colors that you might be able to make here and the different patterns. That is bouncing ball.